Hello and welcome to Nepal Traveler. Once again today we are with the Nepal Travel Trade Talk. Today we have a very special guest here at Nepal Traveler. Mr. Binayak Shah is a veteran in the tourism industry, especially in the hospitality sector. And he is also the president of HAN currently. HAN is the Hotel Association of Nepal. So Binayak sir, welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. So as as the president of the Hotel Association, tell us a little about the Hotel Association. What are the things that you work with and what is this associ association about? Hotel Association Nepal, popularly known as HAN, was established 58, 58 years ago. It was uh, a, a umbrella organization of all hotels in Nepal. Currently, uh, we are, our membership is around 5,000. We have chapters in 17 places where tourism, tourists visit most. And we are in the process of uh, going all over the country in federal structure. That means uh, in all seven provinces, all 77 districts. That is our plan. As a uh, hand, hand, normally we are business organization, business we are run by the member organizations, there is an election, the, the general assembly elect president and all the office bearers. Naturally, our uh, focus is the well-being of the hotel industry. Their rules and regulations, their promotion, their marketing, sales. So we are doing on that basis. So especially after COVID. COVID was a big problem for all the tourism, all the hotels. After that, now we are coming gradually to the to, to the main line, to the improvement is there. So now we are trying to consolidate what we have achieved so far. So it has to go more and more. So as the president, it's a very challenging job. Uh, you were so busy on the phone and yeah. it was busy to get you. What do you see as your major challenges and what are the priorities, the areas that as the president you're working with now? The basic problem is actually problem is everywhere. The thing is we have to solve it, we have to address it properly. That is the thing and, and in timely and, the, and time is the most important thing. What we see is uh, the rules, regulations, the procedures, the programs, everything is there. I mean, when you go to the minister, when you go to the secretaries, Every they know what is the issue, what to be done. The, we, we confront many times whatever is written in the papers is not implemented as we want it to be. So that is the problem. So rules and regulations is there, program is there, procedure is there. The things are not done on the way that uh, we private sector wanted because we have invested we are running it 20, on 24 7 basis the problem is there and it's not uh, solved simple problems sometimes takes many many weeks many many months to solve that is one of the basic problem and that is also from because the number of hotels is increasing as you see now there are five star hotels not one they have established not only in Kathmandu Outside Kathmandu, there are so many. At the at the moment, there are about hundred new hotels in different shape and different sizes, different star category. They are in planning. Some are of the already. structure is already there. Some are in licensing procedure. Those kind of interest is there because after uh, the country is in federal structure, the demand for accommodation for uh, the food, the conferences, entertainment has increased tremendously. To cope with the situation, the many, many new investment is there already. That means new hotels, new activities, means new, sometimes new problem as well. So one major problem that many stakeholders are talking about is this huge number of hotels that have come online, have started operations. With an oversupply of rooms, is that affecting the rate? And what is the role that perhaps HAN can do yeah. advisory or try to? That's right. The number of uh, new hotels 
they are coming out very fast. As you see, almost every month, there is a new property, the big property, they are open, opening up. I mean, there is a there is a big demand, there is a big potential, because we are between India and China. There are so many thousands of Indian, thousands of uh, Chinese go abroad on holidays, and we are so close to them. And uh, Nepal can offer what they are looking for. That is there. And uh, on that basis, whatever a big hotel, a big investment comes, they have business plan. They see what is the future, what is the risk element. And on top of that, uh, the international chain hotels, one by one after another, they are coming to Nepal. That shows that Nepal has a big potential in tourism. They believe in Nepal. They believe in Nepalese people, Nepalese economy. That is good news. The problem at the moment is connectivity, the infrastructure. Because Kathmandu Airport is running almost saturated. Last year, 2023, their figure says about a million uh, tourists come to Nepal by year. And uh, they say that uh, the, in an average 115 flights every day coming in and going out. Uh, that is the almost situ saturation situation for them. At the same time, the good news is now we have two other regional international airports in Pokhara and another in Bhairava. And But they are not operating only domestic flights. There are no international flights. So if we are able to operate these two, Bhairava and Pokhara, the number at least will double. So that is the hope. That is the scenario that the new hotels are coming. Because once the connectivity is there, and uh, Nepal is connected with uh, China and India by road as well. So if there is a good transport network, so many people can come by road as well. So in fact, uh, from India, many people are coming by road. So if, if this, uh, the potential is there, the only thing is the logistic, the connectivity, we, we have to improve. So in days ahead, things should go better. That, that is where our hope and we are discussing these things almost on a daily basis to the government. Also, sir, investment will arrive because there's potential, there's uh, optimism. But is that investment being uh, spread out properly or is it only in a certain area? Like Kathmandu, we know too many hotels have come. At the moment, uh, the, the good prospect is uh, outside Kathmandu as well, places like Dhangadi, places like uh, Nepal, Jans, Bhairava, Butol, Lumbini, yeah. Chiton, Lumbini, in, in the East, Bitlamur, there are so many five star properties have come up. And also many are in pipelines. That means when there is a demand, the investors go to mm -hmm. that place where there is a demand is there. Especially in the Tarai regions, there is a casino. There are many lots of Indians come to the bordering town, big yes, hotels. Okay. Uh, to casinos because there is a demand in that. The other, there are many areas that uh, Nepal can develop as a tourist destinations like Rara. There are so many places. The only thing is the logistic, the, con the road transport, the electricity, the, the water, all those things, if they gradually is developing, all the seven province governments, the, their priority at the moment, one of the big priorities is tourism as well. So we have been in discussion with this provincial government and they are, their rules and regulations, their, uh, their concessions, their uh, rebates, they have the taxes structure, they have announced on, on the, so that the new investment in tourism will, will come. So that is the scenario. The future is good. The only thing is that the, we have to organize the, the management issue is, is, the, is the key at the moment. As the president of HAND, you're in constant conversation with different government bodies. I mean, what kind of infrastructure are you requesting for? If you had to put it one, two, three, the top three things that you want the government to do to help tourism. We have been asking to the government is the first of all, uh, whatever rules and regulations is there. Like uh, we have been going to government and telling them that, that the hotel industry, the tourism industry has not registered as an industry in this country so far. We are treated as a service uh, service uh, service area only. So 
that is number one. If that happens, then the, the treatment from the government that hotels receive, that the tourism entity receive is something better at the moment. Like a small example is the energy, the electricity prices that we pay. The hotel pay is 16, 17 rupees per unit. Whereas the, if you are industry, industry we pay only six, seven rupees. So there is a big difference. Likewise in taxes, in the bank finances, the treatment is the treatment differs to service area and the industry. So hopefully that will happen soon. And uh, we have been telling the government that the two regional airports, Pokhara and Bhairava, also the expansion of road project to, to Pokhara, to Lumbini, to Chiton has to be completed on time. So the project is there for years. And uh, when, you, when you see it, only 20%, 30% the progress is, is done. It, it's it a big has problem, be, yes. Because this is the lifeline of the tourism industry. Not only tourism, for, for all, the, all the economy. Exactly. It has to be completed on time, in war footing, as, it, as, as, as we say. I mean, they started once and they, it's not, it's not followed up properly. It's taking too long. Yeah, that is the problem. So also in terms of when investors, especially for hotels, come into Nepal, do they interact with the hotel association? Do you tell them what kind of, is there some meeting point like what kind of properties are needed? Because perhaps we need much more mice tourism. We may yes. need more bigger convention halls, meeting halls. Is there some dialogues that happen? There? We, we do. There are certain uh, forums. There are certain committees that Han is represented there. And uh, the regular meetings is there. So we tell them what is the scenario, like uh, only on the, the 16th of January, we observe this Nepal Hospitality Day. So there we presented the status of the hotel industry, the, the potential, the challenges, and all, all the details have been presented to the government and to, to the okay, stakeholders. Yes. So, so they know what is the scenario and what are the challenges, what are the prospects. So, but the only thing is we have to go them, we have to discuss, and sometimes we have to push as well. So, also on the issue of standardization, which has been a long time being discussed among hotels, where is that progressing and as the president, where, where are you seeing this now? The standardization, there is a government rules and regulations is there. So, the Department, department of Tourism, they are the focal point and they have published in Nepal Gazette the different standards that the uh, Nepalese hotel has to follow and it is based on the international contemporary standards and hand is represented on that and we, we, we are providing all details to them but at the moment uh, we see the standards they look in hotels in Kathmandu is something different and outside Kathmandu is something okay. different for example to be a five-star hotels in Kathmandu, if the minimum is 100 rooms, outside outside Kathmandu is 80 rooms. So our point is, when, a, when our government say it's a five-star property, it has to be, the service standard has to be yeah. equal, same everywhere, either in Kathmandu or outside Kathmandu, it has to be same. For an international traveler, tourist, when, when, he, when, he, when he stay with a five-star hotel in Kathmandu, or in, in outside Kathmandu, the service standard has to be the same. That is our point, we are working on that as well. So in terms of so many hotels, so many new rooms being supplied into the market, are you satisfied with the marketing and promotion of the destination? Because we need more tourists to fill these rooms. That's right. Marketing is one of the major things that we need. At the same time, as I said earlier, the connectivity, the road, the airports has to be fully functional. That the connectivity is key at the moment. And side by side, on, on the equip, on the parallel side, we have to promote Nepal as a destination as well. So at the moment, the focal point for these all activities is Nepal Tourism Board, which is not functioning properly actually. The there is no CEO at the moment and the the board is uh, also in the process of appoint appointment of new members from the private sector. The budget is there, but the, the, 
they are not uh, they promoting, it. they are not spending it at the moment. So also other associations like the hotel association, the trekking association, the tour association. How much of dialogue happens between all these associations? Are we on one page? Do we have a master plan? This is what we want when we talk to the government. Yeah, there are, there are many, many organizations uh, in tourism trade, which is good as well. So all the interest of all the sectors is being looked after. And uh, now we have a, we, we are a working on together for tourism. So sometimes HAN, sometimes NATA, sometimes TAN, sometimes other organizations, NMA. We organize regular meetings and present our agendas. What are the issues? What are the agendas to be to be solved and to be taken to the government for uh, dialogue? So that we do, but the the effectiveness and the delivery is still, still needs, to needs to be improved. That is for sure. So also one of the biggest problems that hotels faced is finding trained manpower. Mm -hmm. Right now, every hotel says yeah. we can't find the right kind of manpower. Does the Hotel Association yeah. have a role in terms of training or retaining? We have a big role actually. All the, the service standard is purely based on the, the quality of the staff that we have, the skill, the expertise. At the moment, like uh, you see, there are about 2,000 young Boys and girls, every day they are yeah. going out of Kathmandu. I mean, many of them, they are, they, they are from our industry as well. So there is always a problem. And uh, the, <coughs> we have been, the, we, we bring from uh, the, the labor market, we train them and then they go six out. months, eight months, a year, and they go out. That is the trend. So there must be some kind of clear cut policies from the government as well. I mean, we cannot stop them. It's, it's their choice. If they want to go, they can. But the thing is, whenever they come to us, this would work at least for some, some, specific, some specific time, like a one year or 10 months. So that we, as a hotel, we know that they are working with us for this time of this period of time. And they also know, that our trainee also know they have to work for that way. So this kind of regulation is needed. And side by side, the hotel association, we 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 are some we are offering some courses. So the, there is a, this uh, on and learn scheme that we are, we have announced. It is in pilot pilot as a pilot project, project. We are working on that in the uh, outside Kathmandu as well. So that uh, allows our uh, trainee come to us. They go to the training school for one day in a week. And they work for us five days, and we pay them as well. So it, it, they 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 learn and they earn as well. That scheme is already in operation. So we were, we are going to expand it more, and also we are working with the CTBT and the government agencies for this type of the skill manpower that we need. So that that is the need of the hour actually. So is there a, a gap in the payment or the kind of secure future that young people see in Nepal? Why do they go abroad? Because even the bigger hotels are facing this problem. Uh, the trend is such that, uh, it, I mean, the, their neighbor, their family, their brothers, their sister, they are, they are going out. So the, me as a new entrant in the, in the labor market, I see, a, I see to go out as well. I try to go out as well. So that, that is a trend. The number one thing is <coughs> there must be some kind of good information. At the moment, people are listening to others and they're just following them. So what is actually what is happening? What is the scenario in Nepal? What is the scenario outside Nepal? They have to, they, they, they should be able to compare it. That means there must be some good information. The good information network is not there at the moment. So whatever they, they see, whatever they hear, they just follow me up. So that, that, is, that is one thing that we have to improve. So also is the Hotel Association talking to hospitality colleges? There are so many new yes. colleges coming up, but most of them are tied up again with international and the students who join are looking to do an internship and go out. The, we work with them as well and uh, our cooperation has increased in the last few years. So the 
colleges, the hotel management colleges, they prepare actually the uh, bachelors or, yes. or for supervision level, they are producing. We need as well the waiter, the waitresses, the lower category as well. So that is the training institute. We, have, we are working with them and uh, we are telling our members and to these uh, the training providers that what is required. So there must be some kind of matchmaking. So the, the, plat uh, the platform for the job seekers and the job providers as well. So in that area, Han is also involved. So also on the issue of visas, because now most countries post-COVID, they are making visas very easy, offering free visas like Malaysia. Yeah. And, uh, what would be your suggestion to the government to, in Nepal? on these areas. The, the government has announced uh, a tourist development decade to 2023-2032. In fact, actually 2023 already passed. So things are... Nothing much happened. They didn't do much during one year. So hopefully next year there will be something. So the, the government has announced year 2025 as a special tourism promotion year. So we are telling our government that there must be some kind of promotion activities like free visas or, or a bigger event because after COVID, every country needs tourism, the bigger or smaller, or rich or poor. Nepal also needs a bigger promotion activities. So that's where we are working. Hopefully, in 2025, we can do something substantial, something, something quite, quite big. So the year 2024, this year, is looking big for hotels because so many new hotels are opening, the big brands all over the country. What are your expectations from this year? Where do you think Nepal as a destination or hotels in, will do in? Our, our focus is to, to operate the two Bhairava and Pohara International Airports. If that happens and the, the road projects that uh, linking Kathmandu Pokhara to Lumini to Chiton, if that finishes on time and the uh, airport are operational, at least uh, uh, the number of tourists that we have in 2023 will be at least doubled by 2024. That is, that is our aim. Let's see what happens. So as a final question, any message that you want to give to the travel trade, the whole tourism sector? Tourism sector is one of the most potential, uh, most uh, indigenous area of the country. We are between India and China. There is already India and China is the fastest growing mm -hmm. economy on earth. So many tourists from India, from China, we can bring here. Provided the connectivity is there and uh, we provide them the activities, the destinations they look for. So whatever they spend, if we provide them their value worth of their spending, I'm sure that there will be number of tourists will come and they will help us, help our Nepalese economy to grow in a faster. What, what we, are, we are experiencing at the moment, our experience will be doubled. Thank you so much, sir, Thank for you, taking the time to be with us. Sir. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Pleasure.